friends uh, good afternoon one and all and uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have uh, one of my very very dear friends and uh, an exciting entrepreneur with us today on a conversation which uh, i would say is of extreme relevance in covid times see we would have heard of this concept of dynamic pricing in the airline industry some time back uh, the surge pricing in the uh, taxi industry made headlines for uh, all the wrong reasons but we have learned to live with that at some point in time uh, and we also understand that uh, opportunistic pricing in uh, times of need has become uh, the way of life and here we have a very interesting entrepreneur from silicon valley someone who spent decades in us and has built a very exciting company which is unlike many other tech companies is also deeply rooted into operations in india and someone who also comes from a logistics background so we can very confidently say logistics runs in his blood and who's brought out this concept of dynamic pricing and is thriving on that working with some of the largest names of the industry across the country so here we have uh, mr stini sundar welcome chinu uh, for this uh, Uh, conversation on uh, dynamic pricing in this logistics uh, industry see now before uh, as we begin you know if you can tell us where is this uh, covid pushed this industry or the direction into which which it was thus far not even expected to uh, tread along and what are your thoughts on how this is likely to pan out hi everyone hi everyone good evening um divakar first of all thanks for inviting me really appreciate that so pleasure ji yeah thanks so coming back to your question i like to talk the entire conversation is going to be more on uh, the shipper and the logistics company the dynamic pricing model it is going to be applicable for both the shipper side and the uh, the trucker side so the covid 19 both the shipper and uh, the truck owners so it pushed them big time cornered it very very big time and uh, even though there are plenty of loads are available in the market there is no visibility for the sh- uh, shipper and the trucker so that's where the truck aggregator platform and load aggregator platform is going to play a very major role here many trucks are available in the market but the shipper is not able to identify or the shipper has to pay a very big price to get the truck example if the load is going from chennai to mysore the truckers were making 800 to 1000 rupees on 9 ton trucks now they are making 8000 rupees so imagine that margin they are making it it is good for the trucker as a trucker yes it is good imagine on the shipper side he is going through big time you know hell to pass that cost ultimately to the consumer so that is where that the truck aggregator and load aggregator are going to play a very big game whether people like it whether shippers they like it or not um overall and you know over the period they have to work with tech enabled logistics companies or technology companies or the platform service provider to sustain in this market particularly in covid situation until they find some vaccine it is going to be there it is going to be there like uh, on and off lockdown intermittent lockdowns the shippers are going to have good time very bad time sorry to say that so they need help of truck aggregator along with this transport contractors that the same other side other way if you see it the logistics companies the truck owners are also in total mess they have trucks it is just a sitting idle because this industry is totally running by um high resource intensive industry so it can be a driver or it can be a cleaner they are not ready to come for the job so it is very challenging on both sides but the tech platform what are the trucks are available because i am interacting with the major associations in india truck owners brokers um, many people i am interacting and keep uh, gathering all the truck database and everything we are doing it so it is very interesting 
there are trucks available in the market they are ready to go but there is no visibility for the shipper side so so uh, this sorry to interrupt now you said that instead of earning 900 to 1000 someone is now charging 8000 for a chennai to mysore uh, trip so does it mean now the extortion in the trucking rates is it because the costs have increased or the supply has significantly come down or very scarcely distributed what is it like the last point i can say that um, first of all the availability of trucks the scarcity of available trucks and the visibility of available trucks that's what i want to put it from my side as a truck and load aggregator i can say that but from the logistics operator point of view i'm going to talk today as a neutral person because that's my business model because both mm -hmm. are my customers truck and uh, uh, so um, as a logistic service provider or the truck owner what is happening right now the moratorium is happening right now for three months it's gone again three months extended and so the point is what i'm trying to say is so uh, truckers also taking advantage on that but whatever the money they can make it they are also trying to do but i will not say that all the truckers are doing in such a way but um, very very limited i can say 20 to 30 percent of the truck owners are ready to apply across india and they are working on it and anyway if you see the material also in the market just only mainly the fmcgs and pharma uh, actually you know distributing all the goods so the major other construction material and other things the, since the production has been reduced the output is very low and outflow is very low so the truck requirements also it is kind of down it is not just only from our side i'm hearing from other truck aggregators also that is happening so yes it is kind of, yeah. if we have to move on see I, we, there was this recent report which i read where they said logistics operations in this country has come down by almost 90 percent uh, over the last three months now one of course there is a demand constraint because except for essentials other industries are not even being allowed to operate but is this reduction in logistics also because of the fact that many of the laborers or the drivers have migrated to their uh, natives and it's, it's you're finding it extremely difficult to re-recruit drivers and cleaners uh, what is the scene at the ground chain? Yeah, uh, yeah you rightly said it is not just because of uh, the production output if you see that when they start the lockdown they started I think on March 21st, that was about like year end. So they produced a lot. They didn't expect that you know uh, the lockdown will happen. So all the manufacturing industries they produced as per plan. Everything is sitting in the warehouse or somewhere, and you know the godowns everywhere it is there. So I will not blame the uh, the market. It is more on resource issue right now. If you see particularly in South India, more northeast. Uh, and uh, uh, other state employees are here they all gone back so it is more kind of scary situation they don't want to come back and also local government they are paying money they are not ready to take a chance and come and uh, work that is the major issue right now okay so now tell me apart from lack of availability of labor we also see for the first time that diesel is now much more expensive than petrol mm -hmm. is the cost of logistics per se in terms of components, various cost components, apart from the vehicle depreciation and the interest cost, you will have you have diesel and uh, driver's cost. Has that Sorry. significantly gone up in recent times? So? You are talking about the freight or the diesel price? The, the freight or the overall price, let's say the cost per kilometer for delivery. Let's say right. earlier if it was 5 rupees, has that gone up from 5 rupees to 7 rupees given the, where diesel and uh, labor costs are? Right. See, uh, there are two ways you can see that. So I always categorize large scale and small scale operation. If you are a logistics contractor, you are having a contract with the company where your rate is static, but mm -hmm. the diesel component will vary based on you know their contract, 2%, 3%, 5% variation in that diesel price. They can very well negotiate the diesel price and they can increase the freight. So that is possible. But if, if it is a very small scale industry, then again, if they have a contract, it is a different uh, scenario. If, take farmers. 
or take one time or few loads uh, service provider they 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 don't care about that uh, diesel price and other things they try to stick with the market market rate and always negotiate with the truckers that is where the problem so i will mm. not say that diesel price yes it is bothering but mm. if you have a very good contract in place i will not worry about that because that is going to anyway cover my diesel expenses it's purely okay. based on contract some contract clearly says that you can't negotiate within two months of the uh, diesel price okay in okay two months, 13 rupees increased so hmm. the logistics operators are screwed so now tell me when it comes to smaller uh, so if i were to understand you correctly the smaller contract or people who uh, who are more like these freelance operators for them this would have been an issue but for those who are running on consistent long term contracts with uh, industries or companies then there would be a clause in the contract agreed okay, right. now if you were to look at the way this industry actually operate uh, you let's say if you are a logistic operator operating for hindustan lever you are you not supply 100 trucks a day you would not necessarily own all the 100 trucks you will go into the market and pick up let's say 50 trucks or 60 trucks a day based on necessity and the balance 30 40 would be your own trucks correct but today if you were to do that picking up 50 60 trucks a day has the cost actually gone up compared to what it was during pre covid levels okay beautiful question divakar this is what actually i wanted to talk about i'll tell you one thing see right now um, as per 2019 records it says that approximately 100, 160 billion based on that uh, india gdp the logistics we are we were 160 69 they say that billion dollar market out of that if you see that only five percent of uh, the, the the professional logistics service providers are running this show just five percent which means a top 25 logistics service providers are doing it if you see the balance 94 percent it was totally very acutely fragmented service providers logistics service providers right so what is going to happen right now Again, I'm splitting large customers and small customers. What happened right now? See the timing. March 31st in India is year end. And what happens in some companies, they go for tender system. I always say that it is a old system. They go for tender system. They went for tender and they got the race. They signed the contract to start the new uh, logistics service from April 1st. Whoever they signed the contract uh, before the lockdown, they are really, really in a very bad shape right now because most of the manufacturing industries are not ready to renegotiate the price. They are insisting the logistics company to honor the trade. Uh, kind of they are doing it, but major they are not doing it. Then post that post lockdown or even the lockdown situation, wherever the tender system is happening, People are not participating in it. Mm. They get the application form or just they get into the online bidding just to make sure and just they want to know. They are curious about market rate and everything, but they are not even bidding anything. So what is happening in our own experience with the top clients, we got into the bidding, but no one was bidding and the, the bidding process was cancelled. They pushed it to July. In doing this process, whoever they were doing the existing servers, they still continue with with the market rate, they are doing it. So one way the shippers are paying more because they are not able to get the uh, logistic service provider through tender. Mm. So it is it, it is really, really a big pain for the shippers. And I am sure that they will go through this issue um, until uh, government or some country find this vaccine. They are going to go through this issue, definitely. Yes. So people who've got long-term contracts are facing problems and you see very minimal takers for uh, longer-term contracts going forward at least during these times. Interesting. So tell me, how does your dynamic pricing work? Okay. See, uh, when it comes to dynamic pricing, again, we have to figure it out. Is it for large-scale or is it for small-scale industries? See, I have a couple of solutions actually for large scale industries, how they have to go because uh, it is not so easy to um, get the logistic service providers to operate with market rate because we don't know what is the market rate because it is fluctuating, right? So 
if it is logistics companies are going to with the large scale industry that shipper the manufacturer has to come up with the plan example they have to have example 10 transport contractors are there they have to have the strategy of 60 percent like more tender system you, you know whatever the rate the market rate is there they can't go back and compare the history and they can't give the rate they have to go with the market rate and work with existing logistics companies or any any other service providers but the 40 percent they have to insist the existing logistics company to work with truck aggregators uh, for that they have to price for that otherwise they will not get the uh, trucks if it is small scale industries anyway you know they are working with more like the transport logistics contractors or they have to go to the market straight they should not go to the market straight to take the trucks they have to work with tech enabled logistics service provider to get the uh, the, the lowest L1 rate possible every day, and they have mm. to play trucks. So it is a very challenging game they have to play. Otherwise, they will be ending up paying more all the time, or they may not get the trucks. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Okay. So now, in if I were to understand you correctly, if someone were to use uh, an aggregator platform, it is literally like tendering on a transactional basis, and you give it to the lowest. Uh, at that moment, whom server is willing to deliver on the, the commodity. Is that the way it works? Uh, Absolutely, yes. But unfortunately, if you're sending 100 loads a day, hmm. then it is very tough, right? Hmm. So uh, you can't just every day, you cannot push and get all the rates just to verify and send it, right? So you may need to increase the ceiling price or you have to work with tech enabled logistics company to get approximate market price and fix the market price and send the notification to all the truck owners to work for the price. That is possible. If they are going to go for bidding system every day, I don't think they can do that too. So they have to have ceiling price, some ceiling price based on the market rate. If the vehicle is you know, ready to go for 25,000 rupees mm -hmm. and you can still opt for 23 or 24, at least you can save the money of 1,000 rupees. But you can't go like before 18,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. So you have to understand the reality and you have to get into the truck aggregator model. And unfortunately, even I want to talk very candidly here, even truck aggregator, I was listening some videos yesterday about aggregators now. They are also struggling. They are just a facilitator. They don't own the trucks. So we are coming up with different models. I'll talk about that overall, how it should go and all. But answering your question, yes, Unfortunately, they have to do that. Um, they have to work with the tech enabled logistics service provider to do that. Or if it is a small scale industry, or I can even say that 2000, 2500 crores of turnover companies, they have to work with this tech enabled companies, outsource it, totally outsource it. That, you know, bring them as an operator, logistics service provider, outsource it and work on the numbers whether the logistics service provider is making money or not, that is this headache. So you have to fix your logistics expenses. That is the best strategy. They have to move on right now. Okay. So here we have a question, Chilo, from one of our participants, Mr. Stridhar, where he says, can you explain the pros and cons of tender-based arrangement dealing through aggregators? Yes. Okay. See, I will tell you one thing. There are two types of aggregators. Um, I don't want to mention any company name here because uh, we are discussing. So you have to choose the right aggregator who is also in this business. So there are two ways you have to separate. One, they are there is one company, they are only aggregate the trucks, but they don't take any responsibility, which means they are like digital broker. They go to the market, whatever the database they have, they will push the notification, they will bring the trucks and they will give it to you. That's it, I am done. I'm not responsible for your goods. Give me the commission, I'm moving on. That kind of people are also there in the market. They are also truck aggregators. What they have to do, if they are doing a tender system, they have to work uh, tech enabled logistics company who has more database, who can understand this business and they have to outsource this model. Or they have to have some percentage traditional approach and the truck aggregator approach, they have to have it. 
otherwise it is going to be a big pain tender system will fail until the covid 19 issue is going on definitely people will have tons of issue logistics companies are not ready to take a chance they will not go for tender model they will not actually, they will not come into the game so in an aggregation model do you take accountability for uh, the execution of the transaction or you just show i mean you just are you are more into matchmaking what is so you are asking about our company or generally you are asking yes about us right yes about okay. nano yes See, about you know we are very clear that's what we are differentiating here so since we know this business we don't want to just come and uh, connect as a marketplace just a shipper and trucker so we are taking the responsibility once it is come inside we are totally responsible like a typical contractor since we know this business we operate in a different vertical this is not like uber or ola just you know sit inside the car or anything the product value may be 3 crore or 7 crores right it is how we are handling is very very tricky right in transit so answer is we carry the goods so that is the reason we are slowing very slow growing very slowly because it is not just commission based business when we get in we approach taking the entire operation outsourced to us we carry the goods or if you want to come for aggregation model what about the trucks we are providing to our technology we monitor we give frequent updates proof of pickup proof of delivery analytics everything we are giving it as free for them but we are taking responsibility answer is yes we take responsibility so who bears the insurance for the transit and how does it work see in india um, this is how it works the shipper carries the insurance but unfortunately um, one of the clients i am working with the fmcg they send tons of loads but they don't even take the insurance so those kinds of um clients we take insurance but our margin will be little bit higher than other clients so answer is um, the shipper has to do that definitely shipper has to do that shipper has to take the uh, insurance yes. okay get it so now uh, i've got a question from ravi now the, there is this case for a huge shortfall of disciplined drivers and what do you think needs to be done because truck accidents and driver accidents of incompetency and being i mean on drivers in an inebriate situation is a common thing to happen see this so, is very very common scenario divakar yes. very unfortunate in, in india the lifestyle of the driver we all know that that you know even if he's driving 21 or 25 tons of trucks per trip probably he will make 10000 rupees again its salary pattern varies it varies from you know monthly salary to the percentage based salary imagine if he carries there are not much even though the rules are there he'll be driving for 12 hours 14 hours just to sleep somewhere on the floor eat somewhere even basic sanitation may not be there all those things he is going through right so you are dealing that kind of person in india very unfortunate but in us the driver salary is 65 to 80000 rupees per annum his life is a lifestyle is different right so if you th- there are logistics co- there is a um, body called logistics council and the government is pushing lot of training and uh, um, many things they are trying to do yes it is slowly happening in namakal there is a driving institute is there dbs is helping it's all happening but unfortunately driver profession is not a very great profession to come and join only sorry to use this word illiterate guys are coming and taking that position so the cleaners will become truck driver and he will drive the uh, vehicle and what happened last uh, i think few years before they made uh, i think 8th or 10th grade is a basic mandatory to get the license so that's where the problem started not cleaners are ready to come as a driver because he is not eligible that's where the driver shortage all started there so answering it you have to live with it and uh, it takes time you know um, maybe it takes 5 or 5 years or one decade to get into the game because lots of training is very much needed but we have to live with it no other choice you can ask them you know um, one big company they bought 1800 trucks they gave all the uniform shoes uh, relay model many things they tried big time failure you know the drivers okay. are right oh, you have to have oh, very unfortunate now tell me do you see any policy issue which is preventing the government from doing this or If the government brought in some initiatives but it's not been well accepted by the industry see um, overall logistics you are talking about the driver or overall you are asking this the, the drivers 
to address the driver uh, competency issue the first of all i will start from the shipper it is not just i will not blame the government on this you know what is happening the shippers they want to squeeze the rate you know um, even um, big companies they send 1000 trucks 200 trucks per day those people you know what they are doing they are not looking for the great logistic service provider they look for logistics provider who can give the minimum lowest freight possible l1 rate and they wanted to bring and whatever the thin margin they have it they have to give it to the market they have the, i'm talking about the logistics company they have to give it to the truckers they have to take care of the vehicle maintenance emi many things are there so in this process i don't think the trucking company can afford to pay more money you can involve the government on this it is purely the shipper game because shipper doesn't want to pay and the logistics company they don't want to pay much to the employees this is how it is going to be but government side on the government side i'm um, compared to just 10 years before there are a lot of things are going on because logistics industry is the backbone of indian economy a lot of things are happening and if you see that you know there is a, a dedicated freight corridor and logistic parks are coming up and the free trade uh, free trade zone is coming there and you know container freight stations many things are happening port modernization is happening but again it is all interrelated so if you want to if, if we have to blame the government yes and no but it is more on the mindset of the shipper and the logistic service provider if they increase a little bit right i think you know um, on the game changes but that is where it ultimately in capitalism you try to focus on efficiency efficiency till you drive down cost to the right. lowest possible absolutely right so coming back uh, there is this conversation on the dedicated freight corridor you also mentioned by mm -hmm. railways yeah. so if railways is going to have a dedicated freight corridor you think it is going to have a negative impact on roadways uh, i will not say it is a negative impact somewhere i read it long time back it is um, it is saying that two is to one ratio it is going to grow okay but um, india is the second largest uh, road network we have it in the world so road transport cannot be stopped it has to go but where railway network or rail network logistics will grow is more like hub and spoke model that's what i am thinking and uh, even now the hub and spoke model after gst lot of things are happening so if somebody is going to push bulk load like 1000 tons 3000 tons i am going to do it i don't need to go through this um, truck companies i can push it through a uh, rail track um, railway um, network but it is not perishable depends on the goods i don't mind to you know um, wait for the goods let it get delayed but ultimately i am saving tons and tons of money let it go there then i can have a tie up with logistics company to deliver it mm -hmm. so answering your question i don't think so um it is not going to affect but um i am worried little bit on the ocean side but india is long having a long shot to do that if they are going to focus more on ocean freight you know having south india a lot of ports are available if they tune the process of you know um, the vessel clearing as much as possible then there are tons and tons of they can do it but it's a long shot i don't think it is going to happen in one decade because other shipping policy are also there because they can't buy just like that ships and other things are there so answering your question i think railway uh, definitely it is going to help i don't see it is a competitor to uh, road transport but it is going to help only on the hub and spoke model that's it okay interesting so it's more more supplement uh, road transport rather than acting as a competitor right no one of the questions from mr peter is uh, getting the cargo over is one part of the problem being addressed but uh, getting our commissioning operators using e pass is next to impossible and the case study to nasik is what he's reported so what exactly is the issue in getting the commission operators to use e pass while uh, movement i don't know i don't understand what is e pass he is mentioning it here um i need to know some clarity on that actually is my client uh, <laughs> elaborate on your question better i think certainly we will uh, take it forward um coming back uh, it's e pass for carpenters oh i know what you're saying i think e pass means i think he's talking about on the um, covid situation right ha 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 okay See, unfortunately 
um sorry to say this peter you are my client but still i have to say this <laughs> right so the thing is uh, furniture i don't think it is coming into the um essential, essential. right so um e pass is a tricky right so many people they get that through influencer many things are happening and they are getting it but furniture business or anything related i don't think you know, getting e pass is that easy and uh, basically right now slowly the cleaner a uh, truck concept the truck driver concept is slowly fading away if it is a long haul truck they are going two drivers or two uh, people are sitting inside the vehicle i think government is going to little bit more uh, tighten the process of having people in the truck also so giving e pass to the carpenter i know this stuff but it is not easy to do that i am sure that you know uh, i don't think government will do that very sorry to say that at this point in time okay yes okay okay fine got it now uh major companies like leland and tatas who really have their direct stake holding to the logistics industry yeah. have they come out to address the issue of training drivers uh, in the past i think uh, um, uh, i think leland is doing it i think tata also is they are doing it in north india and i think leland south india dealer is the tvs I particularly Tamil Nadu. I think they are having something in Namakkal. I guess they are doing it. Okay. So I think they have it. Their driver is the issue. They know that. I spoke to a couple of MDs on the uh, OEM side. They know that their driver is the issue. Even I spoke to Sundaram Finance people also. They know that the driver is an issue. But they are trying okay. their little best to uh, train them. But I think basic licensing concept they have to change it. The rules they have to change it. So okay. they should not stick with the tenth grade or eighth grade. Something they should change it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So they are doing. Now one other interesting question is uh, when it comes to U.S. or developed economy, the cost of logistics is between eight to nine percent of GST GDP. Correct. Whereas in a developing country like India, it's between twelve to fourteen percent. Correct. Is it because? of the last mile delivery or is it because we we are a very very fragmented country a very minimal access to good roads or is it because of the inefficiency in the system that the cost is high beautiful question you are say um first of all um there are many reasons inefficiency reasons um if you compare north america right it's all well scheduled well planned more automated when it comes to india the industries particularly manufacturing and logistics industries are highly human driven uh, industries right the, the forklift operator will not be there forklift will be there in the industry but unloading point it may not be there right so the delay if you take it if i can reach to hyderabad in one day but you know what i put my truck into the uh, shipper side he will wait for 3 by 4th of the day he takes his own time then load it then get out get pass many small small process everywhere it gets delayed which means the cost involved on that right so when the cost is going up definitely you know it is 14 50 it varies from 6.5 to 15 percent in india unfortunately but is trying to make it to a single digit or at least 10 percent they are trying to do but it is purely out and out inefficiency of both people including trucker including the shipper the major uh, contribution goes to the shipper side that's the main okay. reason yeah okay good efficiency now chin this is another area of interest especially for you given the fact that unlike high end cars the truck leasing business is not taken off in india now fantastic. given the fact that many manufacturers are now struggling to keep their uh, sales moving now do you think this is the right time or some of the manufacturers are actually contemplating moving into leasing trucks instead of selling them yeah the amazing question divakar and actually our vision is going towards that so um, we are approaching couple of oems and we are talking about that a lot right see uh, in again a lot of things are there if you see that in us there is a social security concept we have aadhar card 95 percent of the operations done by um, you know very um, very in, I can say that individual truck owners or you know it, it's more fragmented right so it is it is not like a professional company they are doing it so 
the driver come owner all those people will come under that 94% category so the problem is when i landed in india i want i will just pick i'll give one example how this country is working they landed in india i went to the finance company hdfc and other banks and i asked for the dicas and everything to give a loan for me to buy two trucks i was planning to put down cash and buy it my father told no no go for higher purchase then i tried doing that they didn't give me the loan at all because they said you know what you came from us you don't have the business experience and everything we can't give it and unfortunately my father has to be a co-owner for my trucks in india right <laughs> what kind of, see the, the reason because in us individual social security and credit system and uh, you know if there is any um, default payment they can really go back to the truck owners and collect it or it will big time it is going to affect their uh, credit history but when it comes to india the credit system is picking up right now not like before so higher purchase yes i am done oems can sell the vehicle to um, Uh, that uh, uh, truck owner through the finance company then oem job is done i am done i don't care about the leasing model right but when it is a lease then finance company gets into the game on the rent and everything of course is applicable for air purchase also but the seriousness when it comes to leasing model is comparatively lower than the air purchase because i paid for that ultimately after 3 to 4 years the vehicle is mine but when it comes to the leasing model anyway i am going to pay rent it is not mine right i can just steal that uh, engine i can steal the uh, tires i can sell it then i can return the vehicle so it's all attitude game is going to uh, it's mm. a big game but things are changing now and also after gst um, i think government has to reduce the uh, gst for the leasing they are charging 28% for the leasing which is huge and when they introduce the gst for everything people were go by able to go back and negotiate with the finance minister or they raised their concern on that but in this logistics industry many people they don't want to go for leasing model but the reason is it is all more um, attached to the property like you know i want to buy the truck after 3 4 years the truck is mine right so that mindset they have so they didn't raise it now things are changing companies are coming up with one year lease two year lease three year lease that is changing actually we are also working with a couple of uh, oems to give the truck for lease and particularly we are projecting our company and other companies as a professional company they are ready to work with the corporates so leasing is going to be a big time in india but okay. the catch is gst that we are still working on it we have to discuss with finance minister and uh, commerce minister on that but anyway so answer is leasing going to be very popular maybe it will start next year and next to 5 years i think india will become a, one of the uh, leasing company leasing model will be uh, having it in india get it get it i think that's where the challenge comes with, comes to india we always have the duty structure the tax credit which makes it very difficult to make commercial sense out of uh, transactions like leasing yeah. now just got a couple of more questions uh, i think the last two before we, if if at all we need to send a recommendation to the minister of transport to bring down the cost down mm-hmm. what are the three points you would suggest a question from chandra okay good <laughs> first of all the droning concept should go away oems are first we'll talk about the oems oems are not even able to sell single truck in this market right mm. if at all they wanted to, it, it, this is not because of covid definitely covid 2020 is covid if we go back 2019 they started struggling that time itself right so oems have to do that more than the logistics companies are doing it oems they have to go to the ministers and they have to ask them to reduce the uh, gst so that they can lease the vehicle right so that is the main point they have to do more than logistics companies if they are able to do that that would be great from aggregator point of view the second point truck aggregators we are load and truck aggregators what we can do if you are able to get the leasing model because right now the rent is higher than the lease sorry uh, the higher purchase so hmm. if you are able to reduce the interest rate we want to ask them to reduce the interest rate even longer horizon period we are fine seven years eight years leasing we are fine with that because anyway they are going to maintain maintain the vehicle if you are able to reduce the interest rate 
and provide the trucks through finance companies to truck aggregators that will be really really great and third point we can ask the manufacturing industries or association big associations the example namakal association they have 40000 trucks if they are able to pay less as a leasing fee they don't care they will definitely they go for leasing model and they will acquire more trucks than buying so mm -hmm. that there will be more market share they can sell more and more trucks and uh, you know they can take old trucks back and they can recycle it so mm. i think this is what they have to do so more than truck aggregator i think it is more oems job they have to do it okay 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 and yes you know so couple of more questions one uh, the model followed by uh, the relay model as they call it where relay as a service Mm -hmm. where the running of the truck is not halted but the drivers are changed at specific intervals correct um, now you see that becoming the new normal going forward uh, no definitely not actually okay. when they introduced this um, i know which company are saying when they mm -hmm. introduced it i was talking to one of the top profile in oem they were happy but i told them this model will fail the reason because um there are a lot of standards to be followed to make that is possible a lot of cost involved to make it happen it is mm. not uh, omnibus or it is not a flight to uh, do that the reason because when, when the human being called the driver if it is involved if he is involved particularly on the logistic side his salary is very very low even you give more money you can't get that kind of freight you are in a b2b business you are in a competition with others right if you are operating 8 hours example if the vehicle is going to mumbai via hyderabad the vehicle will go to hyderabad that pit point the driver will get down other driver will take it and go that is possible on airline industry that is even possible on the omnibus service because the driver get more salary that the revenue for the omnibus is bigger than the truck right so when you are working with people are ready to work with the 2% 3% margin in logistics business that to give the money that to operate the vehicle with the three uh, drivers in 24 hours and maintenance cost for the pit points you know a lot of cost involved initially it is good to pack a tons and tons of money from the investor but over all the period it will fail and what i am hearing it very unfortunate the truck whatever they bought it it came to the market and they are trying to get the load through the broker Hmm. So, this answering your question, this model will never work in India. It will be a disaster. Okay. Right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Because the dynamics of labor and manpower management is a very different beast to handle. Right. So, to summarize, uh, you know, dynamic pricing, if we are to understand, is something like uh, the price for the moment given the current uncertain circumstances and that you believe is here to stay see again we have to separate that in large scale and small scale industries because when it comes to large scale industry they are not going to the market to take trucks whether they like it or not they have to live with the logistics operator or transport contractors okay so this is how the flow goes industry to the transport contractors the transport contractors will have their own trucks then they go to the market through brokers or mm -hmm. the broker will go to the market and he will get the truck so the broker or transport owners will take the responsibility the same way the transport contractor will take the responsibility to the shipper right this is how the, the chain goes when it comes to large scale industries okay and mm -hmm. Small scale also they are doing that it is nothing but contract the transport contractors they work with big manufacturing companies hmm. what my suggestion is what my plan is why i am saying the tender system is going to be old the reason because people will not come for tender because 20 percent of the trucks are flying so they are going to have tons and tons of challenges so logistics companies will not get into the participating the tender at all or only one or two people will come they will not they will give a great fright big fright and shipper will not accept it so the shipper manufacturing industry they have to understand the reality first this is what happening so they have to come up with a strategy still they have to work with transport contractors is the point of contact 
and they have to work through transport contractors to reach out the truck aggregators because mm -hmm. they can't directly work with they directly work with the truck aggregators so there are two options one they have to outsourcing the entire operations to tech enabled logistics service provider or they have to work indirectly with truck aggregators through the transport contractors but they have to pay the premium price in this covid situation but mm -hmm. the price will vary it is not static it will mm -hmm. vary if they take static approach they will not get trucks definitely they will be paying huge money to get the trucks because transport contractors also know that this is the great time to make money because after moratorium i am challenging finance companies they are going to see tons and tons of trucks are going to stand in the yard people will just give the key and go back right so so that is what going to happen when it comes to small scale industry it is a great time let them outsource their entire logistics operations to the the best service provider focus on the business and have a deal sit with them throw 3 years of logistics expenses in front of them instead of asking the core this is the price i paid for last 3 years what is the best we can do this year we are forecasting the turnover this is the turnover what is the best you can do they have to sign a contract for long term contract they have to outsource the entire operations and work with them that's where they can get trucks otherwise they are really they are going to suffer more than large scale industry because they have very less muscle power get it get it all scale industries they can afford to go straight to the truck aggregator because they will have their own small dispatch team they will mm. have truckers they don't care what trucker you are so they will come to the truck aggregator straight they will take the loads that is what is going to happen i'll add one more point here we forgot to ask about logistics companies largest is we consider whoever they are giving loads we are considering them as a shipper logistics mm. companies also i consider them as a shipper because they already signed the contract so if the vehicle freight is 25000 rupees the 25000 rupees is for the whole year but they are not going to get the truck for sure right mm. so average profit is the profit they are going to gain but they are big time in a, a trouble they have to come to the truck aggregator model to get the truck so this is the model they have to do so static tender will fail for at least i can say next to one year the tender okay. model will fail and what happens to tenders already signed uh, are they getting renegotiated uh? they have to be negotiated 100% because already the shippers will start to feel the heat because the transport contractors what they can do they are going to charge only the penalty let them charge i don't want 25000 rupees per transaction instead i am okay to pay the penalty right mm -hmm. so ultimately shipper will not get the truck so they have to be negotiated or they have to come up with other decision yes and when, now that i think today we are told that thankfully tamil nadu government has also agreed that uh, lockdown is not a solution and we'll have to learn to live with it so we are going to see the state opening up from day after when do you see this covid uh, mess uh, behind us now that it's going to go away people uh, things get returning back to the normalcy in the logistics industry so it's a um, this is not only government divakar you know because government needs money we need money i can understand but to bring the drivers into the game right the logistics companies they have to take some steps they have to pay more money they have to make sure that they are safe you know nobody is in disinfecting the vehicle people they say many things i don't think they are disinfecting the vehicle you know it's so nobody is doing that so some security they have to give some health insurance they have to give they they should feel safe if i take a truck i should feel safe from the driver point of view to do yeah. that like medical whatever the, the treatment you are getting it from the hospital for the covid situation what are the expenses they are getting it even in america and other places they claim it through their uh, insurance right the medical insurance the same way we have to claim it or we have to add that into our freight to the shipper shipper has to buy that no other choice you know so um, otherwise the covid situation even government is saying please come to the road and we will help you and we are ready to help you and all i don't think the drivers will get on the truck yeah. okay yeah. but unfortunately comparing india with us on the facilities i mean a country with 
$60,000 GDP to $2,000 GDP, I think we still have a long distance to travel to catch up with what at least the, that market can afford. So, but any which way, you know, thanks a ton for your uh, time. It was really interesting to uh, understand how this uh, industry is shaping up something which is a, the backbone of uh, the country and highly underrated and highly underspoken about. I think an industry which definitely leads a lot more voice and muscle compared to what it already has given its relevance to our uh, economy. I think we wish you all the best in your journey in this venture and hope to see it uh, an upcoming unicorn in this industry from India. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot, Shim. Thanks. Thanks, Divakar. Thanks for calling. So whatever I can share, I shared it. So uh, thanks for calling me. Really. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you, Manuel, for joining us. Thank you.